Got anything to say this morning? I got a couple things, John. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good morning. Good morning. Great to see everybody. Okay. So, uh, I got great news this morning. Great news. I'm very excited. Guess what? We've got zucchini. <laughs> Isn't that great? Fran came up and told, told me that we have zucchini out front. Plants that Jerry and her planted years and years ago are still producing. Isn't that fantastic? So we have got we have got zucchini today. If you need zucchini on the way out, please make sure that you pick it up. That just made my day when I heard that. So um, if you notice, Pastor Steve is not here today. He is on vacation. Um, he said he's going up to Jasper and Bam to do some hiking and things like that and recharge. This morning, getting ready for coffee hour, I kind of snooped around on his desk. <laughs> Come to find out, he's actually applied for that America's Got Talent. He's doing a break dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, when I find out when it's going to be aired, because it's a vote, you got a vote, text or vote in, I'll let you all know so that we can. You know, he can pursue his passion there. So, you know he's going to watch this while he's on vacation, right? So, can we all say good morning, Pastor Steve? Good morning. Okay. And, Pastor, we've got about 300 people here today. I don't know why it is when you go on vacation, we get so many more people. We have to go get more chairs from the shed. Uh, but, uh, so, we've got a couple of real announcements here. Uh, second Harvest is going to be September 1st. Uh, please sign up for that if you... Uh, can help us out with that. It is an absolute ball. You're going to work your tail off. Um, uh, I know Carl canceled his gym membership after having moved all the potatoes from one side of the truck to the other by himself. So it's a ball. It's great. Uh, so that's September 1st. We usually get here around 9, 10 in the morning and then uh, knock it out. Uh, if you could please, uh, on the back table, right by the sound booth, is our record sheet. You can update your records just so um, we can get in touch with you. Um, if we have something coming up, things like that, we just like to keep the whole family together. Um, duty roster, uh, we have the duty roster back there. Um, if you can sign up for uh, August and September. Gosh, I saw Halloween stuff in the store. Can you believe it? Oh yeah, what happened in the summer? Um, but the duty roster is back there, and then Gerald wanted to let me know, next two Sundays he is out. Um, he won't be here, so we need, uh, Volunteers to step up for children's church. Do I have anybody who would like to take over children's church for the next two? Are you are you volunteering your dad? Yeah. All right, so that's not Anybody else want to volunteer their parents? No, we're volunteering you. Pontius, did you want to volunteer Audrey to do children's church? Well, I'm gonna be. Not only teasing. Not only teasing. If, if you have time and you can, uh, uh, if you're going to be here, uh, please get with Gerald and uh, get her dialed in there. Um, so we'll do that. Um, that is everything that I have. Thank you very much. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Rob? I would like to speak. I'd like to say something. Absolutely. If I can walk on the aisle. Sure you can. <laughs> we have a lady here, and her birthday was the 10th of this month, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And uh, can we say happy birthday? Absolutely, we can. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friend. Happy birthday to you. And I want to say something else. <laughs> I can, yeah, I'm not going to tell you the day because we get to go <laughs> Because of her and her husband, the wife of church is really good. They're the one that probably was started, and they're the one that kept asking us to go to Coeur d'Alene to Christ the King, and that's why this church is here. I can remember when this church was first built. See that wall over there? That's all big as the sanctuary. Right but because this woman and what she's done in life, look what look what we have here now. Look at the church. Look at the size of the church. We got a little land preschool, the all little kids, which we need in our life. Look at the outreach we have to the community. Amazing. We even got a church started in Carport. And 
I want to say thank you for walking forward as we love you. Thank you, Fred. Accept the praises that we bring to you, and all that we do may glorify your name in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing our first song, The Lord My God Be Praised.
location, which will be both here on the screen, or if you happen to have a service holder, you can follow along there. We gather this morning in the house of God as his dearly loved children, and we are reminded that we were baptized for this moment and forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Have no anxiety about anything. But in everything by prayer, let your request be made known to God. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. We take just a moment of silence to reflect on our personal shortcomings and lay them before the cross. Hear our prayer, O Lord, and grant us your forgiveness. Loving Father, we stand before you today, guilty of many things in thought, word, and action. Our own selfishness weighs heavily upon our hearts. Forgive us for our sins, and empower us by your Spirit's work in our lives. Help us see those around us as you see them, and use us to be a blessing to others. God is gracious and has heard your confession of sin. He promises to forgive those who come to him seeking life and hope. Upon this, your confession, I announce the grace of God to all of you. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in together in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to pay our ransom. We give thanks that you have called each of us by name to be members of your kingdom. Bless our worship today, that it may honor and give glory to your name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants, after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be, must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. Whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. 
kings of peoples will come for her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. On that very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael, and all those born in his household were bought with his money, every male in his household, and circumcised them, as God told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and his son Ishmael was 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both circumcised on that very day. And every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household or bought from a foreigner, was circumcised with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 3. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the, the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you can for a reading of the Holy Gospel. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. And let's repeat together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
I, I'd like to introduce myself to you. Yeah. I'm John. And you are? Laura. Laura? Laura. Yeah. Nora. Nora. Pleased to meet you. Huh? Cody. Cody. Okay. Maddie. Maddie. Pleased to meet you. I'm John. Brielle. Brielle. Huh? Well, welcome up here. Boy, names are kind of important, aren't they? Yeah, you know, it's not made you wear the blue shirt. Okay. Now, which one am I talking to, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. You know, if you just, you just hear it in the Bible reading that they named him, they named him Jesus. Yeah, they named him really important. We like to be called on things, don't we? You know, like special awards, graduation. I present to you, you know, maybe it's mad you know, we got a special award. Do you ever, do you ever get anything special? Uh, now, uh, the one thing I never liked any special was, John William, come here. <laughs> Sometimes I hear that from my lovely wife, John William. <laughs> yeah. But there are a lot of good things to my name, huh? You know, when I was baptized, I'm just a baby, and like Jesus, when he was brought to the temple, he was just eight years old. My dad, who was a pastor, said, John William, Bat John William Louis, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We got a special name. I'm, I'm a member of God's kingdom. And he knows every one of our names. Every one. Just like when Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple, the Bible says, and his name was Jesus, the name given by the angels. We're very thankful that we each have our individual name. Our name. And oh, we only hope that it's for a good reason to call our name. <laughs> Now, would you join me in prayer and repeat after me? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for calling me by name. Thank you for calling me by name. And making me a member of your kingdom. And making me a member of your kingdom. Bless me. Bless me. And all my friends. And all my friends. That we may glorify you. That we may glorify you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Good morning again. Good morning. This morning we have a, uh, a special privilege, which is to approach the throne of grace. And the Lord says to come boldly to that throne. So let's, let's approach that throne together. Father, this is the day you made. We rejoice in it. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we travel through the book of Genesis this summer, and we've been focusing on how God makes promises to us through covenants. Often there's a sign that goes with the covenant. These signs act as a seal or a reminder that we can trust in the very covenant, the promise that God has given to us. I don't know about you. Bear with me as I get this clearer. But I need reminders in my life. So yeah, I got into Steve's office, Pastor Steve's office. Those are the post-it notes. Remember now, if someone talks to him on uh, Sunday morning at church, He'll generally say, please email, please call me later, because I will forget the conversation. Uh, I'm a bit like that as well. It's the same thing with God's promises. We need to be reminded of them continually. Genesis is packed, packed with those promises. Today we're in Genesis 17. 24 years have passed since the Lord first made his promise to Abram. A lot's happened. Abram and Sarai were faithful people, but just like us, far from perfect. God's plan seemed a little awkward. 24 years before, God told him, I will make you into a great nation. But Sarai is still barren. In Genesis 16, we, uh, they decided to fix this problem. Have you ever done that? Um, I do it all the time. Becky will attest to that. God, your plan is so not logical. Lord, I'm a smart guy. Uh, let me help you get this done. I can help. But uh, Sarai has no kids. So she had Hagar with the, her maidservant sleep with Abram. She becomes pregnant and has a son. His name is Ishmael. I've taken care of this for you, Lord. I've got your back. There's a similar situation in Genesis 17. The Lord comes to Abram and gives him two promises, two signs. The first is circumcision. I want your whole family to be circumcised so that remember the promises that I made to you. Through your offspring, all nations will be blessed. The second thing I'm going to do for you, Abram, is change your name to Abraham. Abraham literally means father of many. So he's on board for this promise. But then God takes it a step further. God also said to Abraham, not only will I change your name and give you the covenant of circumcision, as for Sarai, your wife, you will no longer call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations, which is what Sarah means. Kings of people will come to her. So how does... Abraham respond, verse 17, Abraham fell face down and laughed. And he said to himself, will the son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child for me? The next verse, really important, watch this. Abraham's muttering to himself. He says to God, plainly, loudly, God, if only Ishmael may live under your blessing. In other words, for 24 years you've been promising a child, you haven't come through yet. So we took care of the problem. Would you quit bringing this up? It's really hard for us. This hurts. Well, you, we don't understand why you would make this promise and then not come through on it. Why in the world do you keep bringing it up again and again? Would you please bless your smell and get this over with? In our culture today, I think it's hard for us to grasp how important it was to have an heir, someone that you pass your on your family name, your belongings. 
everything to them. It was so important to them, and they were heartbroken. In Genesis 18, Sarah hears the news. She also laughs. They're saying to themselves, God, this is insulting at this point. I'm now 90 years old. You keep talking about children. They can't believe God keeps bringing this up, and he does. But God's not done, just as he's not done with us either, amid our doubts. Verse 19, then God said, yes, in answer to Abraham's question about Ishmael living under his blessing, yes, he will be blessed. But your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son. So listen carefully here for the details. You will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you, and I will surely bless him and make him fruitful and greatly increase in number. He will be the father of a nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. A couple of important details here. For the first time, the child has a name, as John mentioned, the importance of the name. Did you catch that? In the previous chapters, the Lord says, I'm going to give you offspring, I'm going to bless you. But he never gives that child a name. Here he says, his name is Isaac. Just so you know that God has a sense of humor, do you know what Isaac means? He laughs. Every time Abraham would say his son's name, he'd be reminded how during his doubt, laughter. God came to him with a promise. Laughter. That would kick him up in the midst of his doubt. Then there's another detail here. This would happen within the next year. The Lord is giving Abraham a reprieve. You have waited 24 years. Just be patient a bit longer. Within the next year, the promise will come true. Here's why. Ishmael was the result of a man's desire and a man's will. But Isaac was completely the result of God's intervention and God's blessing. So how does Abraham respond? On that very day, in verse 23, he took his whole family and responded to what God asked him to do. At the age of 99, he was circumcised. For hundreds of years, that covenant of circumcision would serve as a reminder to God's people, even when they were taken from the promised land. And there were only just a few of them left that God is faithful to his promises. This sign says God is going to come through on his promise to Abraham. One day, through his offspring, all the world will be blessed. That sign of circumcision serves as a sign of hope for many years. In Luke 2, the promise was given to Eve, and then to Noah, then Abraham, then David, and Bathsheba, and onward. Lived on until it reached its fulfillment in the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, it's not an outward circumcision. Paul talks about this in Romans 2. A person is not a Jew if they are only outwardly circumcised, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, no. A man is a Jew if he is born inwardly. Circumcision is the circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. So what's happening here? We are descendants of Abraham, not because of lineage or blood or an outward act. We are descendants of Abraham because our hearts have been circumcised by the Spirit of God in the same way that we heard last week. Abraham had faith. The faith of Abraham was credited to him as righteousness for God, by God. It's not about your outward lineage or your bloodline. It's about faith in Jesus, the one who fulfilled the covenant. The descendants of Abraham have been made his descendants through faith in Jesus. So we, you, are a fulfillment of the promise given to Abraham in Genesis 12. You are the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. It's not because you follow a written code or because you have been circumcised. Your heart has been circumcised through the actions of the Holy Spirit. To this day, God still gives us signs and promises that we can look to. Hold, see, touch, feel and we receive them. These come so we know that we can trust the Lord. Every time we receive communion, we are receiving the very body and blood of Jesus. It's more than a reminder of what he's done. 
we are actually receiving his forgiveness, his truth, his faith, and his strength so that we can live as his followers. Every time the water of baptism goes over the person receiving the gift, there is a heartbeat being circumcised, not by words, but by the Holy Spirit being active in that promise. We see the signs living in those who follow Jesus. The Holy Spirit continues to work faith in our lives. We respond like Abraham did, in faith. Lord, I don't understand your plan. I'm not sure it makes sense. But I will follow you because you asked me to. Ultimately, we see the sign on the cross. Every time we see a cross, we're reminded of what Jesus has done for us. He has fulfilled the covenant that through his death and resurrection, we have forgiveness. We have life. He is giving it to us. In those times when you laugh and you doubt, and we all do, it's my prayer that through the Spirit, our eyes would be open to the signs all around us that the promises of our God can be trusted. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, may these words and all that we have done and said be glorifying to you in your name, in Jesus' precious name, amen.
Thank you for bearing with me for my little confusion there. Thank you for Brother John pointing the way. <laughs> let's, uh, let's bow and pray together. Oh, Father, so many times we were like Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles where the, the Amorites are besieging and all the people gathered, all the people of Jerusalem and their little ones. And they said, Lord said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are all on you. And today, Lord, our eyes are on you. We have so many, so many besetting sins and the stuff that's hard, the demons that come in the night at 3 a.m., Lord, all the stuff. But Lord, you, you prevail. Your work on the cross has won us the victory. We have peace with God. We have peace in our own hearts. We have peace with our neighbors. And Lord, we can lift them up. And we can care as much about them as we do ourselves. Lord, your promises are good because you are faithful. Today, Father, we just lift up today all those that are struggling, particularly the homeless in the community those that are struggling with cancer and substance abuse, uh, particularly uh, Sarah and, and Steve Hermsmeyer, we just ask that you sustain them with your presence, that you drive away the sickness of body and spirit, and you give them that victory of life and peace, which will enable them to serve you now and forever. Uh, Lord, we just we pray for Steve, Pastor Steve, that he have a time of great refreshment up in uh, northern Canada, uh, in Jasper and Banff. Lord, bring him back to us safe, even safe travels. For all those that are traveling in the next several weeks, uh, Lord, just bless and keep him close to you. Uh, we also pray for uh, Christ our Redeemer, our little lambs, all the outreach that we have uh, planned, including the, uh, the second harvest. Lord, it's such a witness to this community that uh, we are the hands, the heart, the eyes, the very, very <laughs> people that Jesus sent to the world, where he said, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we just ask you, Lord, that you be with us today as we go forth. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. supper he took the cup saying drink of this all of you this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you for forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me we will now uh, partake in the communion and I'm brother Steve I believe is going to join me in uh, administering the sacrament and we will go as we've done before uh, first of all, we'll do the side over here, and uh, Ted will direct you from there. Do we have the next song, please? 
thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, uniting us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. I should know. <laughs>